<laughs> hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode uh, 26 of Wearables Weekly. I'm your host, Keith Acorn. And uh, with me are my uh, lovely co-hosts, uh, starting from the left, uh, Aaron Kasten. Hey, everybody. <laughs> uh, Cecilia Abadi. Hey, everybody. Uh, Libby Chang. Hi. <laughs> and Noble Ackerson. Hola. <laughs> cool. And we are, we're very lucky today to uh, have a, a very interesting guest, uh, uh, Patrick Jackson. Um, let's see, Patrick, you're from uh, uh, Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Glad to be here. <laughs> awesome. We're going to uh, talk to Patrick uh, in a bit more depth, just a second, but uh, let's see. Interesting things from last week. Um, one of our one of our own, Cecilia Abadi, had a nice little um, bit of attention on, uh, on on another podcast. Would you like to talk about that, Cecilia? I was with the pros. Now now I feel a little amateurish. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's not insulting at all. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> we are on training. Let's say we're on training, yeah. and, and seriously, I felt like I was with real pros. I loved the show with the uh, Android gang at Tweet. It was it was seriously awesome to meet Gina in person. Although she just moved out of San Diego to New York, just when I got to meet her and um, and the guys, it was super cool. Very very happy to be there. Awesome. Well, we'll, we'll definitely be asking you for tips and stuff uh, from your professional experience and see what we can do with that. And it was a very enjoyable show. We listened to it yesterday. Yeah, that was really cool. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Aaron, looks like you have a, a new toy. We can uh, talk about it later. We just want to give a sneak peek. Are you talking about my earbud cap things? Yeah, I've got to find them ears. again. They're not easy to find. <laughs> <laughs> this is my science Let's officer. See. Earbud Maybe caps from Pixel and Print. <laughs> yeah, I'll show you a bunch of them later. I got a whole set that Daniel sent me, so they're pretty awesome. These are my favorite, I think. <laughs> awesome. So you're also rocking the uh, the headset for uh, uh, for uh, for Google Glass. Oh yeah, it looks I got like the, we might have uh, Patrick and his twin there. I'm not so sure what's happening, but uh, do we have you, Patrick? Yeah, I'm here two times, I think. <laughs> <laughs> cool. There you are, Patrick. Uh, all right, cool. Uh, so, uh, actually, Patrick, I'm going to turn you over to Noble Ackerson uh, to talk about some of the really cool things you've been doing with uh, with Glass and your work. So, uh, go for it. All right, Patrick, uh, how are you doing today? Doing good. Doing good. A little tired, but. I know I'm I, I'm there with you. These guys torture me every uh, every Thursday night, uh, and I'm an early bird, so I've got and as to. As much as you torture us, Noble. <laughs> Get down and give me fifty. Sorry. Um, <laughs> hey, so Patrick, um, this week, or at least on the twenty first of this month, uh, you got quite a bit of of press uh, and some impressive. Um, Glassware, actually, for 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 your uh, line of work. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Sure. Um, well, luckily Google contacted me out of the blue, and they said they were following what I've been working on with Glass, and asked if I'd be interested in making a video. So of course I said yes. Uh, two weeks later, Rocky Mount making this video. And uh, the video is kind of showing what I'm doing and what I plan to do. Um, there's four functions shown in the video. Mm -hmm. Two of them are working right now, and the other two are parts in progress. So uh, one app I have working is instant notifications. Uh, when we, someone calls the 911 center in Rocky Mount, um, that the uh, address of the call and the nature of the call is sent directly to Glass. Uh, as well as smartphones, but uh, we're focusing on glass. Um, so I get a real quick glance of where the call is, like a, a picture of a map, and a text of the address and the na uh, nature of the call, which is I'm the driver of a, of a live truck, so it, it's very he helpful. Um, and so the second function I have working is a uh, find a hydrant uh, app. I can say, okay, Glass, find a hydrant, and it will tell me how far it is to the closest hydrant and um, give a direction. So if it's to my right, there will be an arrow pointing to the right, and as I turn my head, it will uh, 
That's brilliant. Come into view. That's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. And and are I mean, with this, um, are you planning on just you know piloting it um, at your station and then sort of rolling it out? How does that normally work? Is is this sort of just going to be a pilot program initially, or is it going to be for actual fires? Is the second question, I guess, two part question. Uh, you're going to be using for training. I know in the video you guys had some simulations there. Yeah, well, I use it around the station. I wear glass around the station, so I, and I drive with it to the call, which I know is controversial, but... Uh, <laughs> you know, it's okay. We, we've cleared that, apparently. It looks in California. We're done with that. It's all good now. <laughs> No one has to be the first one to get a ticket. Exactly. <laughs> Thank um, you, Patrick. Aaron yeah. wants to t spend the next hour talking about that. Oh, wait, I'm just kidding. Go ahead, Patrick. Uh, no, <laughs> we covered that to death. We're, we're going to talk about movie theaters tonight. <laughs> All right, well, one more question, uh, um, and then we can sort of start with the news. Uh, Patrick, I notice, and this is a, a, a Wearables Weekly famous question. I notice you have... Um, your your Google Glass you chose uh, team um, uh, what charcoal. is it Char charcoal yeah I was I almost said carbonite for some weird reason <laughs> nice <laughs> <laughs> um char, char team charcoal why team charcoal and does it have anything to do uh, with your line of work I just like the way it looks um. I, I kind of want something that would blend in. That was my thinking uh, when I first chose it. Uh, All right. And 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 I, I promise I, I lied. This, that's not the last question. Do, how does it fit with the helmet? Like, so you've got your 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 your, far, your fireman helmet on, and, and, yeah, and you uh, have your glass on. With the helmet and glass, you can wear it both at the same time. Um, but we wear a mask. We go in a field building, and. Right. Uh, Glass won't work with the mask. Right, right. right. Um, at least in this part. So I guess in in when you bring this to market, uh, this will I, I guess ask uh, I guess will work a little bit more from a um, as an educational tool. Um, I can imagine. I think it will have some real world um, uh, places because there's a lot of external roles that fire departments have on the fire ground. I mean, there's personnel who stay on the exterior whole time right. and having like for example having a perspective of another side of a building if you have a person or multiple people wearing glass on around a building and sharing that view with the commander that could be really helpful well um, you're you're really saving lives uh, I mean in, in, in a world where everybody sort of latches on to all the negative aspects of, of things that are new uh, because they don't really understand it uh, it's really refreshing to uh, to see some positive news come out of the industry that we all love. So, and with, I was checking on your on your timeline on your post, and it seems like this uh, unfolded like people from Italy, France, all sorts of people contacting you. I'm very excited about this solution, right? And that, uh, how oh, yeah. does it feel? Oh, it's pretty incredible. It's been extremely positive response, uh, more than I expected. There's been people calling the firehouse. Uh, we had people call from Egypt today. Wow. That uh, blew my mind. And, uh, you know, all over the country, people, other firefighters contacted me, um, other news stations, mm -hmm. um, and going to with our local news next week. Uh, there's a lot of excitement around it. And I think a lot of other firefighters have been thinking about this type of tech. And right. Now it's starting to, to, to come out, and there's not so much back behind it. And for, in, go ahead. I, I, I do have a question for you. Have you actually gone into a building wearing glass while fighting a fire yet? No. Um, like I said, uh, the mask, you mm. can't wear glass, and the SDBA mask. Gotcha. In so many fields where where people are developing tools to sort of help them, uh, you know, to to accomplish their their tasks, but in yours especially, time is so critical. Having that information just seems mm -hmm. like it's it's really good to have like that instant feedback without having to fumble around for devices or anything. So it's 
It's really cool. Uh, you had mentioned, or someone had mentioned, that you had a couple of other ideas for, for firefighting-related apps for Glass. Um, Something about uh, build, building schematics, I believe. Yeah, well, yeah, floor plans, which mm -hmm. we are have some for buildings in our city, and most fire departments do. And we have a lot of uh, information on buildings in the database um, and contact information and information that we may need during a fire. Uh, I know for, you know, maybe glass isn't uh, the most fitted for, uh, you know, for walking into to smoking buildings or fitting under helmets, but just the idea of having a heads-up display to sort of assist you. Um, do you think that, uh, that this would save you a lot of time if you're, say, going into a building where you, you don't have very good visibility? Uh, where you're trying to, you know, see uh, see how to get to a different room or something like that without uh, having the layouts right in front of you. Yeah, possibly. I, I'm still in the explorer phase, obviously. Yeah. Um, I'm very interested in, in getting firefighters the information they need really timely and easily. Mm -hmm. And glass seems like a natural fit. Um, it's pretty wireless. Um, I look forward to continuing to work with it. Awesome. Well, you're really doing great work, so we, we all do appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And uh, I think unless anybody else has a question, we might go on to news. You're welcome to hang on and uh, you know, interject to, at any point. So. Okay. But we, we understand you're, you're also on call, so thanks again for, for making this. If you have to drop out, we understand. All right. Cool. All right. Uh, so the uh, the first topic for the news today, uh, this was very big news this week uh, in the glass world, and that was uh, a story about an explorer who um, got a little extra attention while he was at the movies, maybe more than he wanted. Um, so uh, the uh, the explorer in question, he, he's remaining anonymous, and maybe for, for good reason. Um, I guess the story is he was enjoying a movie. Uh, it was Jack Ryan, I believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, about halfway into the movie, uh, somebody came in and snatched Glass off his head and uh, asked him to come outside. Well, maybe asked is more polite than it actually was, but he was uh, escorted outside uh, where there were uh, a plethora of officials of various organizations. Some say FBI, some say ICE, some say the... Uh, uh, movie, movie Studios Association, but basically a lot of people were very interested in what he was doing with Glass and, uh, and uh, questioning about it at length. So um, I'm sure we're all somewhat familiar with this story. Um, I guess uh, I'd start with, uh, with what do you guys think of the, the reaction to this, um, the sort of the way it unfolded? Um, do you think that's, well... What do you think would have been a, a good response for, for this situation based on uh, the information that, we, that we're hearing just from this one explorer's point of view? I think he handled it very well, very calmly. He did, um, he did much better than I would have. <laughs> he, actually, I, I didn't see any posts that he had made on G+. I think he's trying to keep himself anonymous, which is, you know, it, it's commendable. I can understand why. Um, but he actually admitted um, he probably wasn't, uh, it wasn't the best decision for him to wear glass into a movie theater. So he admitted fault himself, too. Um, although, uh, I don't he, think that's right, though, because, I mean, if, the, if you're not stopped at the door in one place, they, know, they never tell you, do not wear glass. I mean, you're they, not doing nothing wrong. They don't wrong. have to, though. They don't have to tell you that. You're not Is, doing nothing wrong. Do you think it's wrong. okay to hold your phone up, you know, like this during the movie, and nobody's going to say anything to you? It's not the same thing. But they're he not going to tell you not to. Yeah, it's exactly the same thing. He was not recording. He was not recording. He was just going matter. to the movies. But if you get distracted, I'm not this. agreeing with the fact that someone will come and yank these out of your face. I, I agree. They that, definitely that should wrong. not yank it off your face. That is wrong, you know. I think that's very, very wrong. But they have every wrong. right to, act, to come in and tell you not they to wear it. They can come and research it. They can come and tell you not to wear it any time. Yeah. That's fine. But the way they did it, I think it's completely violent. Well, the way we're being And told it's unfair. It. But it's unfair to the person because, really, you're just there watching a show. You distractedly forgot your glasses. Let's be honest. I wear glasses all day, and sometimes I forget. I might go to a restroom. I pray I'm not going to take it out because 
It's just do what I, I do. I, is the I don't take I don't take glass off most of the time, but when I've worn it to, I I've worn glass to a movie theater, but I took it off when I went into the actual theater. Yeah, when actually, I sat one, down at my one seat, I took one, it off. One detail that uh, we didn't mention is that uh, these were the prescription mm-hmm. uh, versions. I don't of glass. think that matters. Well, hold on, let me. <laughs> finish oh, <yeah>. with it. <laughs> All right. Um, these were the prescription versions of glass. So he. Uh, admits that he did have a second pair of regular glasses that he left uh, that he left in his car. Uh, and again, he did admit that uh, it was probably best. And I kind of agree in a sense with you, Aaron, that uh, I, I wouldn't call call it um, you know his negligence. Uh, I also agree yeah. with Cecilia in that in that basically the point is if he, I've always sort of preached, and I think when we did the glass education cards, like the etiquette cards, we always said, you know, just be self-aware. If you're going in a situation where traditionally they frown on these things, you know, err on the side of people's ignorance when it comes to these uh, uh, wearable devices and and just sort of remind yourself. But as Cecilia said, these are spectacles uh, with the camera, with the glass device attached to it. He wears the spectacles every day. It is human to completely forget and walk into a place. Actually, a day before, I had gone to see a movie with my wife with glass on my face in one of the largest movie theaters in the Washington, D.C. metro area. Never once did I have any problems. I actually took it off midway through the movie because I realized it was there and it was annoying me. Um, And so I took it off and sort of strapped it around my neck. And even that, I was sort of... um, you know, initially a little nervous because I felt somebody could just yank it off my neck and just run. Um, uh, but yeah, it, I, I think yeah, you are going I think to he, the theaters. And... Yeah, I, I think he he handled it the best he could. I mean, unfortunately for him, he 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 got treated in the way he did. It spent an hour, which is amazing. Uh, that uh, it took. It was an only hour. an hour. Yeah. <laughs> well, oh. so the first report I heard was even. We're longer. talking about government hours. agents. I mean, only an hour sounds amazing to me. Yeah, it's a fast interview. No, I, I agree with you, Aaron. It was. Um... I, I Cecilia, I I'm with, on with you 100. percent Walking up and snatching it off somebody's face is totally not cool. But if you had a camera rig set up, or if you were holding your phone up like this during the movie, they don't know what you're doing. What's the first thing they're gonna do? They're government agents. They're gonna go grab it. Well, really, so you can't be like, oh, you well, it be... was off, you know, or you know, some well, walking yeah, away. Someone got shot that. for texting in a movie. So yeah, I guess movie places are becoming very dangerous. Someone got shot. Well, it's, it's not yeah, even. Yeah, someone was yeah. texting oh, and got shot. Ago, so, yeah. 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 It was in Florida, unfortunately. Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> of course, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah just like a few miles from Stanford of all places. Yeah. So yeah. I, um, what surprised me about this whole thing is how many people are like, boycott the movie theater or, no. you know, the, the government is, is overstepping its bounds. I think everybody pretty much did their job, uh, except for the guy who went and snatched it off his face. Okay. I think the yeah. appropriate action would have been, sir, we need you to remove the glass or, you know, it, like they... It was his third time to have worn glass to that theater, correct? And that's like my that's point a little bit, is that we can't put all the responsibility on the user. There's a responsibility in the movies. If you don't want people walking in with Google Glass, when they walk in, let them know. Put a sign. Do something. It, no, because, it's, you know, honestly, it's not their responsibility to put a sign for every device that exists out there. No, 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 no Google they, Glass. No. They have, but this is do something they have that's a sign not, for it, no recording? It's in every they, single movie. It says no filming, no can you know. I mean, but you're not filming. You're not filming, right? Because you're wearing How do they glass, know? You're not filming. How, how do I mean, they know? But, Aaron, but Aaron. there's a limit there. Hold on. Yeah, Aaron, I mean, how do they know is a very good question because how do they know you're not using your cell phone or your your um, whim watch or your Samsung Galaxy watch. I mean, the, I'm mean, i sure if you were sitting there with your wrist like this and you were wearing a watch and somebody noticed you being there three times doing that, they might call the authorities on you. All right. Okay. You know, or so, if you were standing there with your phone like this. The problem is is it's, it's so, like, just part of... You know, it, it, it's right. not... There's, a, a thing, you, there's, there's a no effort to it. It's a camera a, pointing forward. So you take it off. So you're, it's not even an issue. Right. So know, I've been trying to do it for you over the last. Over the I last honestly, few I'm, days. I'm. It's growing on me so much. The thing about putting a cap, both on the image and and I think someone was doing a cap. I think it was Ryan. Ryan Weavings. What's his last Ryan name? Ryan Weaving. Somebody yeah. suggested that. Ryan. Ryan actually built a little cap 
that covers the whole glass and I'm, I'm becoming like this is my best friend because I don't want to be private of my whole glass just because someone is going to suspect that I'm either recording or I'm either watching a screen. Uh, the, a cap's not going to make a difference. Yeah, People I, don't. And, and plus you're talking about a, a, an accessory for an accessory that nobody already knows about. So like they're still going to suspect that the camera's recording. You know what I mean? Putting a cap but, on it isn't going to make You can a show and say no it's not you see. Bye. Yeah, <laughs> by then, you know what I mean? It's like, I, I almost prefer it on, so I can be like, no, you can tell when it's recording, and it's very okay, obvious. Yeah. Or... I, I just I, I just want to be clear that I'm not going to walk into a movie theater with glass at all right now, because this happened, but before this happened, I might have inadvertently done it, and I don't think it's so much I've my done, I've done it every single time. Oh, exactly. That's my point. Uh, so this is time Libby and I were invited to a pre-movie screening just because we had glass. Yeah, yeah that's that's I'm definitely material. wearing glass to the theater. I'm just going to take it off when I'm watching the movie, which I've done in the past already. I will like in the future too, but I, I just, I'm trying to say that we can't just blame the guy so much. Like with Monday News, that's a saying, I think. With Monday News, it's all obvious, right? But before he did it, it wasn't that obvious. It wasn't that obvious. It's no, I, I, don't think, I, it, I don't think it really was his fault. Really. Right? I think most, uh, most of the fault does not lie on him. Uh, he does accept some responsibility for it. Which is nice. Uh, which is, I don't yeah. know that there's a fault here. I mean, he made a mistake, not not maliciously, and then the, the theater and the government did their job. Okay, but when well, it's a mistake I, I there, there that many, some... al almost all of us would have done, it's it's a, you know, a trivial mistake, seriously. How many of us would have done it, seriously? Yeah, before. Before. yeah but, but, but if I'm going 90 down the, the freeway and it's a mistake because I wasn't paying attention, then the cop's now job you is come still with to write freeway? me a ticket, right? Oh, you're not I mean, serious. <laughs> now you're going to bring up this. No. This I think well, that I wasn't intended to, to go back. You know what I'm saying, though. We make I, mistakes, but you still have to pay the consequences when you make a mistake. Right, but I think the, the problem with this situation is an usher could have fixed this problem. An usher but, got it, but it's not the usher's job to fix this problem. It's the usher's job to report it to his boss, and it's his boss's job to report it to the MPAA, and it's the MPAA's job to report it to the FBI or Homeland Security or whoever's name is on that big blue box that's on every single movie we've ever you're seen. You're absolutely right. And you're so absolutely everybody right. just did their job. But <laughs> Except it, for the well, guy who walked up and snatched they it. They did in a, a slightly, yeah, uh, slightly I, I, I ridiculous think, way. Yeah, there was more to the story than, than was specifically related to Glass, and that had to do with sort of the coercive nature of the interrogation and, and the fact that they wouldn't, like, look at his glass, they wouldn't look at what was recorded and stuff you, like that. But that's should. a little beyond... Uh, maybe there the, the may be laws that prevent them from well, doing that without a warrant anyway. So they didn't well, no, no, but that's why they, they required that he volunteer uh, yeah. to, to be searched in this case. Yeah. Um, you shouldn't be treated as a criminal because there's a possibility that you might have been a criminal. Well, that's my, my point. You shouldn't be treated as a criminal because there's a possibility. But and if, definitely that if there's was... evidence that supports you, you you might be participating in criminal activity, they have to investigate that. Yeah, but in a nice way, you know, in a nice way. In a nice way. <laughs> hey, drug dealer, come on over. Would you mind emptying your pockets for me, please? Right. You know, that would be really but nice of you. We're talking about glass. I, I, we know that, but we got to step outside of this bubble that we know, you know? I mean, we know that, but the greater populace, let's figure there's probably 20, maybe 30,000 people that have glass, you know? And so one of, the, one of the other factors that sort of... I understand it, in my opinion, so... <laughs> it came up a lot, especially amongst explorers, was that, you know, we, we all know that glass is going to do a very good job of recording a movie. It's not going to have great audio. It's not going to have great video, but oh, realizing that this is going to be a... A, an issue that will that will happen years from now when maybe the technology is better. Yeah. Um, with that in mind, I do sort of agree with you, Aaron, in the sense that I I probably won't wear my glass back to a theater. Yeah. Um, just don't wear it during the movie. I think you're yeah. fine in the theater. Now it's obvious. Now it's now it's something very obvious. I think now it's obvious for everybody. It's just I want to give the first guy that happened to them a free pass because honestly, you know, you didn't know. We didn't know. Right. So well, he, that, yeah, I think, I think there was a lot pass. of. Us. I mean, he he missed the movie. He got tickets to another movie, and he you know he had to spend an hour in interrogation, and that question, sucks. Question but... for you guys: If you guys got four free passes to go back to AMC, if this happened to you, would you go back no. to AMC and no. enjoy? No, enjoy no. Movie? no. I would. I, I would. would. I would. Yeah, no. I don't care. It was, it was a mis it was a bad situation. Shit happens. Yeah. I wouldn't go to that theater. 
Let me rephrase right. that. I'll, that yeah. I'll probably go to another AMC theater. Yeah. Yeah. I drive I'm out of you. my way to go to an AMC theater because I like it so much. <laughs> <laughs> so what was, what was it that you were holding up, Noble? No, I was just, um, you know, it was getting a little rowdy, so I just was trying oh, to... Oh, I was having fun. I, I knew this was going to be a fun conversation. Of know. course, of course. Keith and I were talking about this. <laughs> Sorry. I was like, I'm going to egg this on. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing it in a, in a comment thread the other day, and people were getting mad at me. It was fun. And if I could make any advice to the RAA, uh, I think that this sort of... Um, let's say, brute force way of, of cracking down on piracy is probably not the most effective way to do this. Um, uh, well, Bravo. I, I, don't think, I don't think you remember the IRA. I, 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 <laughs> IRA. They, 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 those guys are rowdy, but I tell you, yeah. who else is rowdy? The people who will go to an 85-year-old woman's house because they suspect that she's pirating. Um, and I think that's uh, more of the same. It's, it's, it's <laughs> definitely trying to solve a business model problem with police force and like brute force issues. So I think uh, you know, you could somebody could walk in there with a little spy cam. You'd never see it. I mean glass is at least visible on your face, but there's lots of ways you can record. Keith, I, I, I think we can all agree glass probably doesn't belong in a movie theater. Yeah, well that's not the point though. But I, I, I think you know how excited the guy who got the call about some potential pirate uh, pirating Jack in the United States. Oh no no no! The guy who the guy, the guy who responded to that call was like, "Oh my God, this is it!" Yeah. Driving, they, they, they've been watching too many movies, I think. Driving at 120 miles an hour, Seriously. just like calling mom at home. Mom, this is my big break. Finally you got know? one. <laughs> You're right because that stuff doesn't happen in the U.S. Nobody nobody get, get, makes cam recordings in the United States. Uh, speak for yourself, there, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we have a comment here from the audience, Hermano Teles. He's saying something interesting. He's, he's saying, "Isn't this the purpose of the Explorers program to test the boundaries and see what society will yeah. and will not accept?" So I think that's brilliant. It's true. Good point. Really we are in the fire line. <laughs> I, I, I could have told German. you that uh, society wouldn't accept you wearing it in a movie theater. Yeah, advance. yeah, but now we know what. But the now movie we know is. for sure. For, sure. for people <laughs> who don't think about it, walking into a movie. By the I mean, way, I think to turn my phone off half the time, unless that little little thingy comes up that says "turn your phone off." All right. So, hey, by the way, in case anybody was wondering. Um, this is the only thing we're talking about today. I just want to let you know we're no, doing no, I, was, I was just about to change the subject. Can I change the subject? We're moving on. Okay. No, we'll, yeah, we'll, so on an exciting note, I got some really awesome, awesome stuff in from Pixel and Print. Here's their card. I'm gonna. I'm just giving them a promo because they're awesome. Um, Are they paying you for this? No, they're not. And and I even paid for all of these. They did well. Or, they probably sent me a couple of free ones. I don't like. I don't like all this peddling on my show. No, free, free, <laughs> free advertising. If if you're awesome, you get free advertising. This is the one. I, this one was my idea. Oh, for yeah. the record, I've been trying to get nice. Daniel Ward to get uh, to come on this show for ages, and he's always been like Mr. Super Important Professor Guy. He That's is cool. super important, Professor Guy. Classes are about to start. <laughs> I know. I know. Then I got the uh, red and yellow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then oh, well, you don't want to awesome. wear red though, because you know, because Star Trek. That's what they're all Star Trek. <laughs> oh well, well you're you well, could be the not, next generation. You could be a captain. Sure. You could be a captain in the next generation, or you could be a captain in the original series. You know, red shirt or, you know... You know, Luke and I just started watching the original shirt, series after happened. all this time. I, I noticed Captain Kirk's wearing a lot of green for some reason. I've never seen he that. He did wear some green for a while there, you're right. That was early on. <laughs> well, as long this as one's cool. Plus one. Oh, very nice. <laughs> yeah. mm, that's awesome. As long as we're showing off our pixel customs. print stuff, I just remembered we had this ornament Libby had acquired. And it's a, it's a little uh, Mr. Mr. Jingles, and it actually jingles. He's got a little bell in there. Oh, wow. Are you Mr. jealous? Jingles. Are you jealous? You're jealous, aren't you? <laughs> oh, wow. Is custom, it custom order there? Customs. Yeah, yeah you're jealous. Be more. jealous. <laughs> what is that? What does that say? This one's Wink Logic. Wink Logic and Wink Feed. Oh, cool. That's, you get you get awesome things when you have awesome logos that work for stuff like this. Thanks, Asher. Asher, if you're listening, which I know you're not, but if you were, thank you for being an awesome designer. Very cool. Very cool. 
So moving on. Uh, Back to the movie theater thing. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, pretty guys. much all the news this week does have does revolve around glass. So uh, all right, let's go on to unless you had a specific story in mind, Libby. Oh, I was just going to go on to the story. Okay, cool. Uh, all right, the next story. Uh, let's see. Well, I'm going to skip that and go on to the, the, the one that's last related here. This, uh, <laughs> Thanks for the story. Never mind. So, We're going to skip that story. So uh, we talked previously, and, and actually the last story sort of tied into this, uh, having prescription versions of glass, like this guy in the theater had a prescription version. Well, now, um, let's see, what was their name? Yeah, we didn't even get into that. Rochester. I just, yeah, Ro thank you. Rochester Optical uh, nice. now has their uh, prescription um, frame. Like, well, they're calling them frames and lenses available for glass. So I guess the way it works is there's some sort of like lens holder. Uh, it's very slim, small, and you, you have your, your lenses uh, made and put into it. And then it sl slips into glass sort of like uh, the, the current inserts do. But you can have all sorts of things done. You can have whatever your prescription is, not to mention like coatings. You can have transitions lenses, all these sorts of things. So I don't know. Uh, I don't I, I'm maybe, I don't know why um, these um, OEM, these manufacturers don't just take the time and develop something that gets rid of the band, the, the yeah. little band there. Uh, there's a torque screw, just unscrew it, figure out how to sort of ha fix it neatly to it, and just get rid of this little thing. Cause it you know, I, I think neatly is the issue, though. I don't know that there's an, uh, a neat way to do it, because even when you take a screw out, this, this metal band thing. runs beyond the level where it separates, yeah. so somehow you're going to have to, like, yeah, I'm just I'm not crazy about the band myself. I would rather just unscrew it and tack it on and zip tie it to something else. So yeah, more into DJs uh, than bands. This if I can pull up the picture because they actually do look pretty nice. Um, as far as as far as they can Let's see. So did we talk about the wearables contact lens? I was gonna. And by that. the way, Tim Moore is uh, one of the guys with uh, Rochester, uh, the opticals, and one other of our news, he he might be on our show soon. So okay. shout out to Tim. Oh. Yes. All right. So, so this is a, sort of a, a picture of what it is. It, who was that? You said Tim Moore? Tim Moore, yeah, that's Tim Moore. This is his post, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, so they got like some, some just prescription version, like a brown tinted version. And I think these are transitions, so... Did, well, anybody, get that was just showing Did you guys hear anything about some, uh, some of a Super Bowl thing with Rochester? Yes, and yes. What is exactly. that about? He has to come <laughs> next week and tell us about it, right? <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Te yeah, teaser for next week, I guess. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Cool. All right. So I, the uh, the topic that's uh, near and near to Libby's heart apparently is uh, <laughs> Google X uh, group is also. Oh, looks like I'm still screwing my screen. Cool. So the Google X group has also come out with another. This is sort of crossing the line between wearables and embeddables. I'm not sure. This is probably... Like, I'd still uh, say this is wearables, because you can still take it off. You can take it off, but it's not exactly sitting it's, on the outside. Yeah. Anyway, it's, so they're, they're it's contact right there lenses. in the middle, right? Yeah, so it's contact lenses... Are about the glucose meter? ...that yeah. can detect, I guess, with the salinity or the, the, the um, sugar. glucose levels of, the, of your tears, they can tell you if your blood sugar is too high, too low. And for people that are diabetic... This is like a real big problem. It's something you have to do mm -hmm. several times a day. You know, prick yourself, get a blood sample, run it through the machine. It may be a lot better now than it used to be, but it's still a big pain. So um, this is just a, sort of a way to um, get instant feedback with an LED embedded in the, in the lens. Or they even said something about having a, a wireless capability where maybe it, they can send it, that signal does, to another device. It does have a, uh, an antenna. And if you haven't watched uh, Babak Parviz's... Um, uh, um, what is it? The moonshot, the 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 sulfur X talk that he did. Definitely take the time. Uh, it's it's a little long on the long side, but you could definitely want to if you're into wearables, definitely check it out. I have a feeling that uh, that technology is sort of you know a trojan for what's to come. I think uh, yeah, Google Glass. Google Glass, uh, you know, augmenting my reality. In the near future, uh, if, if Ray Kurzweil is right, this will only be about eight to ten years, I'll be able to sort of sit in my self-driving car and my eyes roll to the back of my head, which, see, which basically means, you know, my pupils are fogged out in order for me to get immersed into whatever it is. I'm you know, times. you guys have the Matrix plug installed right back here? There's a yeah. uh, television show <laughs> called Black Mirror. 
Did anybody see Black Mirror? That's yeah, all wireless now, right? Yeah. yeah, exactly. We don't need that little plug anymore. So the <laughs> Sorry, Aaron, what did you say? Aaron? There's a television show called Black Mirror. Uh, it was a BBC television show, and one of the episodes, I think it's season two, episode two. They're, they're each season is only t- three episodes. Uh, BBC. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they do. Uh, but they're like an hour and a half episode or something like that, so they're long. It's kind of like Sherlock. Uh, but it, what it is is you get a, they get a chip implanted, and it basically records everything you do all the time. And so then when they rewind and watch what they, you know, like previous video, their eyes kind of fog out, and that's, I don't know, just made me think of that. Anybody seen the movie Her yet? Apparently there's some really cool UI stuff in the... Uh, or UX in, in her. That's uh, on my list of uh, movies to watch. Um, I guess you brought up the you brought up uh, I brought up Ray Kurzweil. That's a good uh, singularity movie. People who are into that movement, I yeah. am definitely a um, you know a card holder there. And there's another movie coming out tra- called Transcendence, uh, mm-hmm. featuring yeah. uh, Johnny, Johnny Depp. Yeah, and, he, and and it looks. Like, I mean, I just completely drooled the whole trailer. I I, I want to watch that so bad. It has this sort of. Um, you definitely check out the trailer. I don't want to sort of ruin any things in there, but it's it's super singularity like. Yeah, it kind of. Fortunately, you have a better that. shot of reaching the singularity than uh, I think Ray Kurzweil does. <laughs> a little bit more time. It well, was for, for, anime. Oh, what was what was that anime? That kind of. Oh, Ghost in the Shell. It does remind yeah. me a lot of Ghost in the Shell. Yeah. yeah. To me, when I saw the trailer, uh, Johnny Depp's character actually reminds me of um, Ray Kurzweil. Uh, so, <laughs> like, the type of dangers that he goes through. And then, not to deviate from the show notes, but within the last couple of weeks, I don't know if you guys are familiar with what's the ridiculous stuff that's going on in San Francisco with... Um, this protest group at uh, people's yeah. houses yeah. that's so that are, yeah and they're concerned about you know the self-driving car being um, you know manufactured for the military and Google Glass being for surveillance I'm surprised it hasn't gotten as much press um, as as it uh-huh. needs to especially from the glass community uh, because these guys are completely like on some Luddite level trying to sort of block all you know progress that is being made and if you've read um, uh, uh, any of Ray's books he talks about these type of things and and, and uh, that's inevitably going to pe- happen people who are against change or, or drastic change as the law of accelerating returns keeps going things rapidly accelerate the technology rapidly accelerates and people can't really digest wait didn't we just have an iPhone that was thin enough to fit between this crack and now you want to shove an iPhone on my face this is insane I, I have to I adapt say this. that's when you know you're making progress is when people start protesting but that I mean it's it's inhumane I mean, people are just dumb, they're, they're going overboard dumb, I think. Uh, yeah if you think people have uh, you know have uh, strong reactions to glass and having cameras in your face I can't wait to see the reaction when you start start talking about embedding like little monitors and devices and stuff. That's gonna be a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And when you read uh, some of the comments, and I made the mistake when Cecilia got into let's let's talk about that. When Cecilia got, I was kidding. Uh, Cecilia got into the uh, uh, the infraction uh, initially. I made the mistake of staying up the first night and just reading some of the comments on <laughs> Gawker and and oh my. Goodness, they were just oozing out of the woodwork. It was like fine wine, the level of just authentic, just hate and ignorance. It was mm-hmm. just beautiful. Anyway, I, I'm done. <laughs> I, I found that's what happens when you get on the What's Hot page or what the or the Hot Hot Stories page on Google Plus. You get a lot of extra non techy perspective. Yeah, and it's just all just like just like regurgit- regurgitated bile. Very pretty girl. Oozing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I think let me Would going you back date to your story, like me. Going back <laughs> yes, to your story I originally, so. I know Keith, you posted the the story of the um, the engineer that got targeted through all of these uh, protests. The the one who came up with the self driving mm-hmm. or who piloted the self driving car, or the head engineer. Yes. Yeah, so this was yeah. I I sort of stayed out of this this uh, fight for a while because I I can understand the position of some of the the people that are. Protesting, I don't agree with them at all uh, in their what they're doing, but uh, it's been more of an economic issue for them up to this point. But what happened this last week that really disturbed me was 
instead of protesting the buses and protesting the bus stops and all the stuff that was going through the city commission, they actually picked out like a particular Google engineer, worked in the Google X team, was the self-driving car guy, and they knew that he worked on, for the Google because he had the self-driving car parked in front of his house. Okay. And they were protesting him. They were having flyers and trying to like, you know. They would pick at his house. Anyway, so th this is a little bit off topic, but yeah, that was very disturbing to see it sort of get to a personal level because of these people <laughs> having an industry or. Which which brings us back to the transcendence movie and that link and and that trailer and and what happens to the to the Johnny Depp character and we're back on track. <laughs> cool. So anybody else have any? Thoughts Sorry, on the, uh, I thought I was muted. The smart contact lens, or it's just go. awesome to see technology helping health and people, and it's always good to see. It's just, yeah. yeah. You know, I was, I, I'll be honest, I was on the fence about putting it in my eyeball just because it's like putting a little silica chip in your eyeball. It's kind of weird, but I would, I think I'd like to try it. I think it's kind of neat. I'm not a like diabetic. That. I'm not. I'm a not either, yeah, it doesn't I really apply to us. In particular, but but I think you know this is just one sort of thing. I, I imagine there's other things they could probably detect besides glucose level. Uh, maybe if you have hypertension, they could detect sodium level or something. There's a lot of other things, but this is a really good step, and I'm glad that Google's sort of keeping these uh, moonshot projects going. So, cool. I can't wait to hear the that watch could do that rather than me having to put something. <laughs> okay, in so eye. moving on. Uh, the next story has to do actually the next two stories have to do with Google Glass in particular being used uh, in sports-related contexts. Uh, it sounds like Noble has a particular interest in this next one, so do you want to hit it? I'm going skiing with it. Anyways, go ahead. <laughs> you're, Sorry, you're going skiing with it? Yeah. yeah. No, oh, I said skiing. I'm going oh, skiing. Skiing. <laughs> skiing. Yeah, so the Sacramento, Sacramento Kings um, actually announced this week that uh, they were the first professional sports team to ever record and stream a live game using Google Glass. Well, it's not as exciting. It will. It's actually tomorrow. It's actually tomorrow. Uh, it, it's not as exciting as I initially thought because when I heard that, what I read... Uh, was every player on the Sacramento Kings with Google Glass in an actual game, which is not really going to No happen, so. way. <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> would be <laughs> awesome. You can see the spells from a first-person perspective. Yeah. Exactly, all the flops and stuff like that. That would be you know? so awesome, but no way. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll get to experience LeBroning on the, uh, on the first. Yeah. You know, so for the time yeah. being, no, but you're still the only person I've seen uh, make those shots through Glass. Yes, and, and I still hold the record. I challenge anyone on the Sacramento Kings to uh, beat my records through glass or it didn't happen. That's a, a consecutive ha uh, free throw shot, a three-point shot, and a half-court shot. Um, and if you can do that uh, through glass uh, when you've only worn glass for, you know, I, I did this in April of last year, uh, not to pat myself on the back or anything, lengthy. Too much. Um, all right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like Winfield has nothing to do with this sports thing. I'm sorry, guys. Um, yeah, so coincidentally, they're, they're not... Yes, you can, actually. And <laughs> I, and as I was reading that uh, uh, article, a Winkfeed article came up on my class, and it actually said, no, seriously, the cap, the, the capitals, uh, uh, if you guys follow hockey, uh, the Caps were the first professional team to do this, and it was by my buddies up the street in Northern Virginia here from APX Labs. They actually um, also have their own sort of play-by-play -play, uh, narration that comes to glass as you're uh, in the you know nosebleeds uh, during the game. All in all, it's super cool. Sacramento Kings, obviously, in the Golden, you know, in, in, on the West Coast, they get a little bit more press about it, and DC gets the snub. It's all good. We get who are they playing? The Pacers, I think. You know, I don't know. I can't remember, uh, but yeah, I'll. Um, they've definitely got right, uh, the one Kings. more person. Nobody cares. How oh, is the Kings? <laughs> uh, no, I, I thought it was the Sacramento Kings of the team with. Well, yeah, they are. So, uh, so they, nobody they, cares. They, right. right. <laughs> so as you said, they won't be they won't be wearing glass like on the field or on the court. <laughs> They're uh, sports maybe ball. Diving into the next story, but uh, but they will have like the players that are like on the sidelines, the cheerleaders, even the mascot. I guess is going to wear it. and so the mascot. Like, all these different perspectives of the I, game, just that, not on the court. That um, that would be super exciting. Be and super what I'd like to see, and one thing that would be really cool if this happens down the line is, you know, I can understand why they wouldn't want to have the interference of something on your head when you're playing the game, but. 
Um, if you can imagine like practice or having coaches be able to sort of see from their players' point of view, get That'd like feedback awesome. after you're done with your stuff, that could be useful. Yeah. Um, in a few weeks, we have some interesting announcements to make in that arena. So, Noble, you made uh, three consecutive, like, in a row shots. Not, not in a row. The, the, half court, say, okay. the half court shot missed the first time, but I made it on the second round. Oh, that's counts. impressive. Yeah, no cuts. No cuts, nice. I, uh, I'm not that good. <laughs> All right, uh, and then the very next story, is, uh, Keith, if you want to sort of move move along. Yeah, uh, cool. So, uh, so sticking with uh, glass in sports, um, I guess there's also going to be a, a, a similar first-person perspective view um, in and around the Super Bowl. Uh, there's an announcer, John Kiko, who I, I'm assuming is well known in the New York area. Uh, oh, he's yeah. going to be like wearing glass as he's broadcasting the game. So. He's probably going to wear it like this and say, "This thing does not work." Terrible. This Stephanopoulos thing, no. Yeah. Oh. And and I can't record, and my privacy is being. <laughs> he's going to accuse Google Glass of violating his pri- uh, privacy while he is wearing it. I don't like that guy. Sorry. I, I hope he. I hope he does get some uh, experience before the game because I would hate for him to like walk into the men's room or something like that and not have to. <laughs> Not realizing. Exactly. It's, am I still on? <laughs> but supposedly this is actually going to be broadcast on television. It's not just going to be on the website or whatever. It'll be part of the, the Super Bowl coverage. So it's kind that of- is fantastic. I think that that would be a big win for Google Glass and um, a validation uh, to everyone who's telling me that I'm wasting my time and I need to go. Yeah. Find I, I did. It'll allow us to wear them in movie theaters. <laughs> Since the name uh, Tim Moore has come up. Uh, and we're back. Already in relation to the uh, the Rochester Optical, I guess uh, they must have been involved in this somehow because they're saying that uh, that he was involved in sort of setting this up for uh, for John Kiko. Um So maybe yeah, he has prescriptions or something. Maybe he does. I I hope so. Rochester, a CBS affiliate. I don't I don't really know. Yeah, there is actually one thing that interesting. Uh, going back to the Rochester thing, real it's quick. It's in New um, York. <laughs> that I thought was interesting, and that was that I hadn't considered that like. You know, the prescription normally you have like either like near sight or far sight, but um, having the the heads of display right here, that's not a typical place for a prescription to have to to suddenly have like a near sightedness on the top. So I guess they had to make special considerations for that. That's a good point. That reminds me. Um, I just wanted to remind Noble again that uh, the last time I went to get my eyes checked recently, that it was still excellent vision. So, haha. Uh-huh. And... <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> so you already have your, you, so you already have your prescription. It just got awkward. And, uh, Aaron, just a clear insert. Yeah, yeah, I just need clear. I want the ones they're clear, and then they like just get dark when the sun the comes transitions. up. Transitions. That would be yeah, nice. no, but but non-prescription. Aaron, like safety glasses. I regret ever going to the optometrist. <laughs> Optometrist. But now I see in HD, so joke's on you. (laughs) Yeah, my vision's still probably better than yours. Oh, you suck. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. She said it was 2020 plus 2 or minus 2 or something. So 2018 or something like that. Cool. So unless you guys uh, have any more news, I guess we can go on to events. Oh, I, I can keep rubbing this in Noble's face that I have better vision than him. That's fine. That's That's true. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know. Has, has the Noble said uncle yet? No, I'll, I'm done. That's the last time until next until week. Until next week. Yeah. yeah. Good job, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on the later topic. So uh, so there are some events coming up. Um, again, unless you have any news, I'm going to keep going. Cool. No, keep no, going. go. I'm sorry. I'm just ruining <laughs> so, uh, the show. So one thing that, uh, that Libby has organized, if you're in the Bay Area, is a, uh, a repeat of our Segway tour. Um, actually, I'll let Libby... Go into the details. Oh, yeah. So February 1st at at 3 p.m., if you're interested, I think we're doing it through Electric Tours. Um, It's just going to be a quick tour of the Fisherman's Wharf area, but it's going to be on a Segway, and it's going to be with a bunch of other explorers, which will be so much fun. It Um, really is a lot of fun. When we did this the first time, you know, I had never been on a Segway before. I wasn't sure how hard it was going to be. But, I mean, A, it's really easy to, to pick up. Um, second, it's really awesome for recording glass because it's a very smooth ride. You can sort of pan your head around and get these really nice shots of the city. All right. it's, uh, it's pretty fun. And you get to meet a lot of other you know, explorers in the Bay Area. So 
Hmm. That's cool too. Maybe we should do that instead of touring the Cowboy Stadium. We'll just say. Oh wow! No, no, no! Stick to the Cowboy Stadium thing. You can do the Cowboy Stadium on a subway. On a segway? No, there's stairs. How do those things handle stairs? Um, probably not. (laughs) That would be awesome. (laughs) You might want to double check your insurance before you start, but yeah. Oh, I don't have to worry about the insurance. Keith, are we going to talk about the uh, Mi Mini, a wearable computer, a wearable camera, rather? Uh, sure. Huh? <laughs> Sorry, I've, uh, I have forgotten that the, the story. Would you like to refresh me? So there's this um, continuous you know, sort of life-logging service. There have been a few of these. It's on Kickstarter. It's called the Mi Mini. Uh, it's a wearable Wi-Fi enabled camera uh, with recall and it helps um, it helps you as long as there's battery film and log your life uh, and the nice part about it is that you can walk into a movie theater just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> get some stop-motion movie huh? <laughs> if you could get a recon jet you could walk into the movie theater that one too probably <laughs> I, I right. looked it up, Keith. I was wrong. It just says spring 2014. I don't know where I got the two months from. <laughs> so, cool. Actually, you know, I, I, I was interested in this story. We had, I brought it up, I think, for last week and didn't get to it. So thanks for, uh, for reminding me. But, uh, yeah, it is kind of cool. I think people might have more issues with this. But No, uh, but that's the thing. View, that's the thing. You're not going to have more issues with it. Nobody's going to know. No, well, so no one's going to know. The, the problem with Google Glass, and maybe this was to bring attention to it, is that they made it very obvious that this was a thing that was a weird thing, and it was new and different, and it had a very long battery on the side. So when people saw it, people freaked out, and they go, my privacy, you're taking it. However, I see people walking around with Samsung's uh, fantastic Galaxy Gear or every single cell phone that has ever been invented within the last uh, two years or so with the camera and no one complains. It's amazing. Uh, so uh, just so you, to disappoint you, the Mi Mini is going to be a success. Uh, it's going to go into the ranks of the Momoto and, and a lot of other more covert uh, life logging devices for people who love that. Actually, I, I would love I love the idea of life logging. I just don't know whether. Yeah. So the pictures up here. I mean, we've seen similar devices, but or not similar, but yeah. other types of wearable camera devices where maybe it takes a, a picture every thirty seconds or gives you some like you know way of looking back at that your day. That was the Memoto, right? The Memoto would take. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Uh, but this one actually, uh, I guess it records like all the time and. If you ever decide that something important just happened, you've already got the recording, and you can like uh, have it dump the last five minutes into the, the memory card. That's part, my so. dream to have a DVR in your life. Like <laughs> yes, yeah. I mean, I would love. I love the idea too. I just don't know if I'm. You know, the battery life isn't realistic to me. In concept, it's like my dream as well. However, in reality, it's one of those things where you know everything is amazing, but we're not happy. You you want something small and covert and sort of that tucks away, uh, yet does all the amazing stuff like record your whole life, and and realistically the technology is not there as we've harped on there almost every episode. That's so I just Do want to really surprise want you. Our whole life recorded though. Do you? Mm. You you don't want it now. I let me. I know this. You don't want it now, but you will want it in five mm. years or two years You've when you can search. You've got to watch Black Mirror. When you, you can you search, do, but, oh, I will. I, it. It's on my list. <laughs> I have to get Netflix DVD though. But anyways, um, I'll share my Plex with you. <laughs> um, in five years or in two years, when you can search in your memory, like you can search in your own brain, mm-hmm. you're going to want to have everything recorded from yesterday. Back to I can I, 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 I kind so of then, can, so then when you're arguing with your significant other and they're like, remember when you said this? Wait a you know, that's oh, already, you, that's want already, already you, want, you want to know that you have it. You don't want others to know that you have it, I guess. Aaron, you want that's access, an old others. technology. That's been around. If you remember, Dave Chappelle showed us the, the pocket stenographer from years ago. Uh, it was just a, a smaller uh, man. I guess we can say midget on this show because I just said it. Um, and 
it was strapped to your back, and every time you were having conversations with your significant other, the pocket stenographer would <laughs> have a typewriter and would type everything. So it's it's an old technology. I have my cell phone. I can log everything the same way. So it's not different. I no, mean, I'm just saying. Are we sure that we want that? I because I I say a don't. lot of things, and I don't want a lot of those things thrown back in my face because I say a lot guess, of guess things. guess what, I Aaron. Like, this uh, hangout is being recorded, and I can throw all the. That's okay. Food, I haven't said anything here. For years. We come back to this moment and argue with you forever about you not wanting your memory saved. You see it right there. And I'll be like, see, this is why I didn't want it saved. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> see, I, I mean, it's going to happen. It's kind of like, you know, the inevitable re evolution of, of technology probably is just yes. going to be, we'll be able to record every moment of our day. But I'm just saying, there's, it's not always a good thing. There's a lot of good things that will come from it, but it you may not be. You can use it in a good thing. way. If you can, have everyone, one you can examples, use it in a bad way. I think what the interesting is that there are reasons that, that maybe I'll want it later that I can't even think of now. It's kind of like, yeah. you know, I look at my inbox. I have like 100,000 you know, email messages in there because they're all archived. Now, I wouldn't have said mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, hey, I want 100,000 emails in my inbox, right. but you know, maybe I wanted to search for this one exact thing that I didn't know I was going to be important later Man, on. Yeah, you can, see, you can make that even broad and just sort of pick the so, internet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah that was one of the interesting nice things always in the show. Uh, they, had, they, they were going through the airport, and they're like, okay, show us your memories from the last 72 hours. Oh, wow, so yeah, that's, 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 my, that's my data. We don't want... Yeah, I don't want that, they, yeah they, they, this would have to go lockstep with privacy yeah, issues. I mean, yeah. it has to be like your <laughs> information. Yeah. But. Hey, I but I mean, talk about, talk about a new security feature, you know, if everybody's got this chip that's recording and they can share it to any screen or whatever, you know. I mean, I'm going to, uh, by then, we would have had an agreement with the government, we would opt in to the NSA to you know, share <laughs> our, our thoughts, and that's just, you know, the opt-in nature would be more accepted, so... You know, if I feel or you just like don't use the technology. If if I feel I don't trust myself and you know something got me really upset, I'll just sort of opt in for the day for the NSA to track me and then precog in case I am gonna do something so they can come arrest me before I even think about it. So <laughs> I, I minority think this report. Is, I, yeah, I, I think uh, we're on our way to. We just have to embrace uh, the future. I mean, this is mm -hmm. inevitable, like somebody says. Yeah. I'm very tired today, so I'm sorry. This for has been fun. It's, 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 it's a topic we could actually go on at some other time. But uh, cool. yeah. okay. I uh, um, I will I will share that video with anybody who wants it because I think you guys will really it, you'll you'll be like wow that would suck. But you know I think this is overall. this is the tipping point. I've heard enough references now that with your insistence, I think I'll go ahead and watch it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, same uh, now, with me. Now there's two, yeah. like I said, there's two seasons. Some of the episodes are really weird, but. And they they all leave you at the end. You're just like, what? But yeah. it's a good show. All right. Uh, well, let's, I guess, wrap up with the other events. So um, on February 4th, there is a free event here in San Francisco. Uh, this is, um, let's see, the Eventbrite Tech Talk Google Glass UX, UI, Dev, and Wearables event. Uh, they got some speakers like uh, Dave Martinez, Dad Anson, Anna Fonts, David Lee, and, and some other folks. So uh, if you're in the Bay Area, it's free. Why not? I'll be and, there. Uh, hmm? And next week I'm gonna be uh, in Miami uh, for the weekend running the ING Miami Marathon, my very first uh, full marathon. I did three halves yet Ooh, last luck, year, buddy. and I'm running through glass. That's how it ties into wearables. Uh, um, so the way mm -hmm. I'm gonna make it succeed is, as I always talk about, uh, when I run, I don't futz around uh, with the interface. Just like when I drive, I lock this thing up, I put it on my face, and when there's something picture worthy, I, you know, do the hardware button, uh, sometimes I may, you know, get to a water station, unlock it, take a vignette, share it with uh, you guys. I want to make it an event. Uh, so stay tuned for the influx of uh, Miami pictures uh, next It's uh, going to be cool. Next week. Uh, is, so is that the version 2 then, Noble? Uh, I will be running with a version 2, but I will have it locked, so I don't think Wink lock works well. Well, I was wondering if, like, you know, you've had some issues before with some, uh, with, with being able to run with it. I didn't know if maybe they'd address some of those. Issues. Yeah, I've, 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 in order to train for this marathon, I have successfully done, you know, it's at least, uh, you know, minute, 20 miles with glass, and I still have battery at the end of it, so I'm pretty confident that, uh, I can make it last. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. 
Um, who knows about this uh, mobile dev con? Looks like a couple of our hosts might be involved. Yeah, all so, the cool people are speaking yeah, at it. <laughs> so I you believe you're doing it. I saw your picture leaving in the homepage when I looked for it, so I think you're speaking there in a panel or something, right? Yes, I'm on a panel. I actually haven't been to the homepage yet. That's and bad. I'm going to be speaking and telling a little bit about the story, the development of LinksFeed and more. And Noble, yep. you're speaking too, right? No, uh, that one, wait. the next one. Oh, that's the other one. This one is end of January, so this one is pretty much uh, next, like week, next week, I believe. It's next, next Wednesday. Next yeah. Wednesday. Oh, I was thinking of uh, the wearable. I started preparing that. Uh, Cecilia, are you speaking in this as well? I'm speaking on that one, January 29th. Yeah, uh, for I think it's a Wednesday. It, yes. Yeah. Hopefully, or a Friday or something. I think I think that's uh, 29th is a Friday, I believe. It's a Friday, huh? Well, yeah. I, was, I, I, I was think it's a I Friday. I think it's one day, so maybe I'll make it Friday. Ah. Hmm. I might have. I'm to, not sure now. I, I, I better check the date again. Yeah, we gotta <laughs> check that. That thing. Someday I'll be asked to uh, speak at an event that I'm not planning. <laughs> Yikes, I'm looking at the event registration. It's a little pricey. Um, is there any um, discounted sort of like... Tell you with Wearables Weekly. We can yeah, ask. come we on, can man. Ask for sure, yeah. Uh, is this the DevCon or is this next this week? This is the DevCon. Dev the mobile, no, this is the mobile next week, okay. end of January. Okay, and then, and then the, the uh, one that we're, is... most of us are going to be there is yeah, end of uh, no beginning of March. All right, and if you use and if you know a speaker, uh, your favorite speaker, and you use their last name, you may get a discount. Just check with them. Cool, and that would be the Wearables DevCon March fifth through seventh. So right. ask for a media ticket because we need somebody to report on it when they come back next week. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, we're yeah, okay. Yeah, I think we're we're. Cecilia was working on that. Yeah, that we're mixing the two conferences, but it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That was so partly my fault. I guess Germano is saying that uh, uh, he is going to be speaking in Brazil at a in a lecture. And about yeah. yeah, some of us maybe Yaron can speak with. Uh, no, wait, Germano. <laughs> and this is a little late, but congratulations to Germano for getting a hold of your glass. That was a, a long wait, but I hope it was worth it. So, very cool. Germano came up and, and uh, attended our Google I.O. Extended last year. So, yeah, nice. very cool. Awesome, yeah. cool. No word on when I.O. is yet this year, but we're still... Uh, just those leak dates. Crossed. What's that? But just those unconfirmed leak dates. Leaked. Right. Nobody it's here is a GDG member, are they? Or but... GDG uh, host. No. No. Um, okay. No. No. Not really. No. Too I'm late. Try and make one, but I'm yeah. Just <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, it's been an awesome week, and uh, I guess anybody have any final words? Mm. No. Goodbye. Cool. Right. I'm gonna try and make it next week, but I'm probably gonna be exhausted from skiing because I'm going skiing. Did I mention I was going skiing, guys? Lucky. No, you haven't said it more than five times. Oh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> With my perfect vision, I'll be just cruising down the hill. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, you just reminded me this I love you guys. High end, but I think we'll save that for next week. Fisticuffs, Aaron. Fisticuffs. <laughs> Throw cool. them down. I don't I know. That's wearable. Is that how? Is that how it goes? Like back in the day, it's like I challenge you to a duel, sir. Go, buddy. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we'll save that for next week. You would, yeah. you would just beat me up totally. It wouldn't even no, be a competition. No, that's not even. I'm not a violent I, You know how person. I win fights? I run away. Me too. I pee myself. And you're faster than me too at this point, so I'd On probably have to note. pick stuff up and throw it at you. <laughs> Leave me alone! I think we're going to end the show now. We should definitely end the show yeah, right I now. Think it's First awesome. ending, I think, no, I think it should have happened. Yet. End. Finish. <laughs> Terminal. Easy, guys. Hit the button. <laughs>